Hello and welcome to another training video from Embrel, an Ameritherm company. In today's training video, we're going to set up an EcoHeat induction heating system. This size unit typically comes as a 10 or 15 kilowatt induction heating system. Your EcoHeat will come with the power supply, workhead, and coil. You may have also ordered a cooling system if you don't already have one. In today's video, we'll show you how to set up your EcoHeat induction heating system. You will need to determine the voltage needs of your EcoHeat. The input voltage requirements are clearly stated on the label which is on the side of your EcoHeat. We will use the following tools when setting up the EcoHeat. A flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, and 9 16 and 9 30 second sockets. The first step is to remove the back cover. There's a screw on top of the unit that needs to be removed with a Phillips head screwdriver in order to remove the back cover. Now we need to connect the three phase power. Cable entry is provided via a plastic strain relief bushing. It is recommended that your power cable be routed from a fuse disconnect to the line side connections at the EMI filter. We need to attach and secure the conduit between the fuse disconnect and the power supply. Route the cable from your fuse connect to the mains cable port of the power supply. Strip the insulation to 18 millimeters on each of the five wires. Here, as far as the EMI filter goes, we need to use a Phillips head screwdriver to ensure the three terminals of the EMI filter are fully opened. And then we can insert the power wires and then secure them by tightening the terminals with the Phillips head screwdriver. Then above the EMI filter, you'll see the two protective earth ground uh, wire connections, and you just need to connect those wires and secure them to the posts. The I.O. wiring port provides access to all electrical connections for all input and output signals. Here, there are outputs to your devices, an optional pendant or PLC controller, signals from your analog controller, external flow switches from the workhead, and a serial port for an RS485 hardware connection. These plugs are removable for convenience in moving and servicing your equipment. Here we are wiring 9 and 10 in the lower terminal block. 9 and 10 provide access to supply 24 volt DC power to power remote status signals and drive your remote start and stop signals. A flat head screwdriver is required to secure the wires. Now we need to connect the RF cables. The RF cable terminal posts X1 and X2 provide access to the RF cable connections. The energy created by the power supply is directed to the workhead via the RF cables. As mentioned, the terminal posts are marked X1 and X2, so you simply need to match the corresponding RF cables to those terminal posts. We use a 916 socket to tighten. We must also secure the drain wire to the post to the right of the X1 and X2 terminal posts. Now 
Now we need to connect the sense leads. X2 connects to X2, and X1 connects to X1. Your EcoHeat uses water to cool internal components. The inlet and outlet quick connections are clearly marked at the rear of the unit as you can see here. As a protection mechanism, internal flow switches are used to interrupt heating if water flow is inadequate at any point. We have now completed power supply setup. Replace the back cover by sliding it on and securing it to the pins and then insert the screw on top of the unit and secure it with a Phillips head screwdriver. Finally, we need to put the coil onto the workhead. Use a 4mm Allen to firmly attach the four brass screws from the supplied hardware kit. This has been another training video from Ambrell, an Ameritherm company. If you have any questions, please contact us and we'd be happy to help.